Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 This video lecture is based on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this particular lecture is talking about Dick and Carey's model for instructional designing. This video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi. The academic expert or the reviewer of this video is Dr Savita Kaushal from Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi This video is produced under the project DDS Swayam Prabha Channels of Ministry of Education Government of India Hello my dear students I am Dr Iram Khan assistant professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education Faculty of Education Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi Today we are going to have a discussion on the emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and the topic of discussion is related to the models of instructional designing and the model which we are going to discuss today is given by Dick and Carey which is uh, popularly known as the Dick and Carey's model of instructional designing also known as the systems approach based model of instructional designing So first let us see the objectives The objectives of this session are to discuss the instructional designing model given by Dick and Carey and also to elaborate the steps of Dick and Carey's model of instructional designing. As known to us, the instructional designing models can be found in a very wide variety. While some of these models may focus on how to make the lesson plans and the others focus on the delivery of the content itself. here in this case where we are talking about dick and carey's instructional designing model this particular model is the one which focuses on the lesson plan making the dick and carey's instructional design model is also known as the systems approach model and why this is called as the systems approach model because the systems approach is basically uh, the approach in which each part in the instructional design process is viewed as interconnected as a unit instead of being viewed as the individual components this particular model is based on the research of uh, walter dick of uh, florida state university and lau carey of the university of south florida popularly this model is uh, told to have uh, nine and in few of the cases 10 steps like you can find different literatures mentioning that uh, either 9 or 10 but here uh, for the sake of ease of the viewers i am taking this uh, 10 step process or i'm going to explain it in a 10 step process for the planning and designing of the effective learning initiatives this model of dick and carey includes all the five stages of the edi model but it adds further depth and structure as well it also has more focus on design and less emphasis on the implementation than we have seen uh, given in the edi model it builds in iterative development through the ongoing revision of instruction so we can uh, see that uh, in case of the edi model the things were not uh, very uh, like um, Uh, simply said at times we have to make the interpretations but here in this model the model given by uh, dick and carey the more simpler steps and the steps which are actually divided into sub steps can be seen so it, that's why it is considered a, as a good model for instructional designing we have decided that we will be discussing the 10 steps in the dick and carey's instructional designing model and all these 10 steps are connected some of the steps influence the other steps indirectly and we can also find the direct influence of few of the steps on the others in a very noted book of dick and carey which is named as the systematic design of instruction they they have written under quotes components such as the instructor learners materials instructional activities delivery system and learning and also performance 
performance environments interact with each other and work together to bring about the desired student learning outcomes quotes close we can find all those things all those important aspects of instructional designing very well written or very well prescribed here in this statement of dick and carry itself which is from the renowned book uh, written by them only the systematic design of instruction let us now start with the stages or the steps of this model the first step is to identify the instructional goals this particular step is known for determining what learners are expected to be able to perform at the end of the instruction if uh, the first step is basically for figuring out the instructional goals this means that you or anybody who is the part of the team who is designing the instruction are able to or will be able to identify what it is the students need to learn what basically the students are willing to learn then the instructional goals are set out where you basically want to get to what will be the aim of yours in terms of designing the instructions and in defining them we or you should align with the objectives or the strategic goals which are in consonance with the organization in which you are working the the strategic goals or the uh, goals of the organization should also be taken into a very close coherence it should be very much clear on the part of the instructional designer that what the learners will be able to do or how they will behave after the initiative or uh, the instruction is delivered and this should focus on the real world skills and behaviors of the learners the second stage or the second step is to conduct the instructional analysis this is also uh, considered to be determining what skills will be involved in order to achieve the goal this second stage of uh, the dick and carry instructional designing model is to conduct the instructional analysis what exactly instructional analysis determines basically it determines the current state of skills and knowledge in the uh, the learning population or among the students who are going to be the part of the course and through this particular uh, analysis we can go ahead as a instructional designer uh, or as a teacher we can actually identify the gaps of the goals this can be assessed through interviews surveys observations or different forms of testing depending on the nature of the skills the third step is to identify the entry behavior identifying what skills and attitudes the learners will uh, have while they enter the learning task is something which is very important in addition to analyze your learning population's current level of knowledge you should also need to understand their behaviors the traits which they are coming with the levels of motivation and other factors that will affect their learning journey this information will help you to design the appropriate learning methods as the instructional designer or maybe in a few of the cases the teacher is also going to design the course or the instruction so the teacher can also be uh, in a good uh, way uh, or uh, the teacher will be uh, getting some help if the entry level behavior in of the learners is, is uh, identified in a better way the fourth step is the step which is based on the writing of the performance objectives there is a lot of uh, transformation or skills required when we are going to write the objectives so the needs and goals of the task into clear cut objectives uh, it should be stated very clearly learning objectives should be smart 
and should lay out tasks and processes that must be mastered and how they will be assessed that this should also be uh, somehow uh, mentioned when we are uh, stipulating the objectives these may be known as SWBAT and what is this acronym means student will be able to so we can start writing the objectives with the statement student will be able to so this is somehow when we are planning and we are writing the performance objectives which we we want to have as the learning outcome or learning objective uh, at the end like which we want to achieve at the end of the session the next step is to develop the criterion test Identify the ways to assess the progress during the learning process. Uh, this is something which is very important. And assessment should reflect the performance objectives. To monitor and evidence both the progress and effectiveness of the instruction. As the instructional designer, we need to develop criteria and specific tests. These should be on the right format and level uh, for the uh, for the uh, learners who are the part of this learning process so basically uh, when the test is designed we should be very much uh, keen towards seeing that the the test is very clearly uh, stating uh, and is uh, in a position to check the objectives it should be in a right format and it should be according to the uh, the level of the audiences or the students the next step is the development of instructional strategy. Developing activities to help um, the achievement of the objectives is something which is very much importantly addressed here in this step. These activities include how the information will be presented, how the learners will practice what is uh, to be learned and how the learners will be tested. So only once you know what your goals, the current state, the gaps, objectives, and testing approach, uh, all these things are, um, you should uh, actually will be in a position to define your instructional strategy. It should reflect your analysis and use the appropriate learning theories, uh, basically to achieve all those uh, uh, objectives. Uh, this is something where you are uh, uh, going to develop the instructional strategy so all these things when we are uh, creating all the activities in terms of uh, achieving the objectives or related to the learning uh, outcomes that is something which we do here in this step the next step is to develop and select the instructional materials this step basically is based on determining what instructional materials will be used in the process of instruction how we are going to collect the data that will be used to improve instructional materials and to expand the effectiveness of the instruction for a large number of learners. So the materials, tools, exercises and delivery media should be decided once uh, we are uh, in a position to define our learning strategy. These may include face-to-face, group-based or uh, even in case of uh, online learning materials that material uh, can be facilitated by the teacher or maybe we can go for searching some online material which is from open educational resources but we need to uh, to actually select every single instructional material uh, which can be used in the process which we are designing in this instructional process the next step is to develop and conduct formative evaluation. Using the data from the formative evaluation to make improvements and revisions to the parts of the model is something which is done here in this step. This stage of the Dick and Carey instructional designing model is basically based on developing and conducting the formative evaluation. Formative evaluation involves assessing how effectively we uh, as an instructional designer has formulated our learning initiatives. This can be obtained through the review process, focus groups, uh, discussion, testing of segments and piloting the learning program. 
feedback obtained should be used to iterate and um, do the the uh, like maybe taking the initiatives in terms of uh, checking and correcting the uh, the learning process every now and then so the next step is to develop and conduct summative evaluation this step and is basically used for analyzing the quality of the system as a whole summative evaluation takes place once we have delivered our initiative and it is used to assess how effective it has been are the participants satisfied with the program have the knowledge and skills increased because of this program has the business noticed any benefits due to it or maybe in case of the students whether they are now more skilled or uh, the knowledge is now more increased once they have uh, completed this course or the program so these type of questions are basically answered or uh, they are being analyzed here in this particular step the last step of dick and carry's model is the ongoing revisions in instructions this step is basically uh, based on using of the data which we are getting from the formative evaluation to make improvements and revisions to the parts of the model this particular uh, thing should be continually reviewed and revised throughout the instructional designing and the development process regularly seeking feedback testing outcomes and iterating through stages of the learning products will help us as the instructional designer to ensure uh, what exactly we are delivering and what exactly will be the best possible outcomes which we can receive before completely beating ourselves uh, up over not spending time on one area if we already know the answer for one area it makes the job easier the job of creating a course or creating an instruction easier it means that we can uh, more easily do the rest of the process which simply shows how they are all connected whether directly or indirectly this is something uh, which makes sure or which actually reflects that because of all these attributes uh, and all those simpler parts this particular model is considered to be a good model of learning how we can use this model and who can go for using this model the model of dick and carry this model can be used in a classroom and even in a business setup any subject in which the students are expected to be able to perform a task by the end of the instruction they can follow the dick and carry's systems approach model and even if we go in the business world in in those areas where the business personnel are working the companies could design their training or mentoring programs with the use or with the help of this model both schools and the corporations they are going to get benefited from this model if they are using it in a very judicious way whenever there is a goal there this goal is to be achieved and by the use of this particular model the achieving of the goal and the steps in order to achieve the goals is going to be happening in a very systematic way so it it is considered to be a very good and useful model both for the uh, education system and for the business world every model or every approach has got some strengths and some weaknesses so let us see first the strengths of this model because this model can be used in various subjects and the areas even the educational setups as well as in the business world a strength of this model is its flexibility so flexibility is the first strength another strength is that that this model is very goal oriented and it works as a system we all know that it is also considered to be the uh, systems approach based model by starting with a goal in mind the other components of the model interconnect with each other and develop for uh, like th they develop from that initial starting point finally this model takes the learners 
and their prior knowledge and preconceived notions into consideration. And because of the interconnectedness of the model, the learner's entry behaviors affect the decision making in the design process. In turn, many of the learner's needs can be addressed and expectations can be achieved. So, seeing all these advantages, the, uh, the good points, we can say that this model has got many strengths. It is considered to be a very a good model for uh, creating or for developing the instruction process, be it in the educational set setup or maybe even in case of the uh, organizations which are dealing with businesses and other areas. Now coming to the weaknesses. A weakness of this model is that it could be time consuming. Because of the steps and the discrete steps, we can see that at times it is taking much time to execute. A lot of uh, thought and work must go into this design process. So this model would not be beneficial if a teacher or, the, uh, or a business does not have much time for instructional designing. Another weakness of this model is that it does not account for variables. What does it mean? In this case, let us take an example. A teacher could use this model to design an instructional unit. Then she is going to implement it. The next thing she is going to evaluate it. And then on the basis of the evaluation, there will be some revision. It, if uh, there is any requirement of a revision, the teacher is going to revise it for the next year or uh, the for the next uh, schooling year. However, the teacher will have a new group of students next year who bring in different preconceived notions and who are going to have uh, various uh, uh, degrees of prior knowledge. Now, what exactly is going to happen? Whatever she has, uh, uh, she has actually made in terms of correcting the instructional unit, implementing all those uh, corrections and all those things, there is a possibility that now, because the audiences are different, the students are different in this new academic year, the strategy or those, um, uh, those components which are revised now, according to the previous year students, they might not work on the, this particular year students. And that is why what may have worked before may not work this time around. And maybe there can be a position where the things can work, but there is also a condition where the things may not work because now the audiences are new. So this is somehow uh, considered to be another weakness of the model. But anyhow, we can see that the strengths are much more and uh, this model is considered to be a good model in terms of designing the instruction, in terms of designing the lesson planning or plan planning of the class. So it is uh, somehow a very uh, good model in terms of using in the educational set setups and even in case of the business uh, organizations. To summarize this lecture, uh, we have seen that the Dick and Carey's instructional design model is also known as the systems approach model and this is having nine or ten steps and here in this lecture we have uh, taken the ten steps uh, process for discussion. These 10 steps or the 10 step process is used for planning and designing effective learning initiatives. The Dick and Carey system approach model is very similar to the EDI model. This model includes every component of the EDI model, but it breaks the five phases of the EDI model into 10 smaller components. Analysis of goals, instruction and entry behaviors take place at the beginning of the Dick and Carey's model. Then uh, there is the design and development of the, uh, the test or uh, here in this case, the criteria reference test, instructional strategies and the instructional materials. 
Once the implementation is complete, there is a formative and summative evaluation at the end of the model. And on the basis of these uh, evaluations, even constant revisions uh, in the instruction is uh, done, which makes this model uh, somehow uh, the, the smarter model. Because every time the teacher is trying to make changes on the basis of the feedback and the evaluations which are uh, done, in terms of uh, creating the model much more user friendly uh, and this is considered to be this one of the strengths of uh, this model it's a good model for the creation of uh, lesson plans for the creation of uh, uh, the instructional designs or even in case of planning the instructions for the classroom setup and even in case of the business setups these are a few of those references and the links uh, which were used for de developing the session. You can also go ahead and study more from these uh, links and get yourself much more updated in terms of the different models of instructional designing. So this was all for today. We will see each other in another session and another time some other day. Thank you so much. Dear learners, you are watching a video on the emerging technologies and issues in educational technology. And this lecture talked about the Dick and Carey's model of instructional designing. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.